morning everyone um today i'm going to show you how to do that capture that was in that real thingy i posted i've had a couple of people ask me how i did it and um i was just practicing trying to learn how to do reels to be honest because i'm not the best at social nonsense uh, so yes i'm going to show you how to do that uh, the most important part of that is learning how to join hp3 and one because that's not very fun um, but once you've got that down then it's quite an easy capture to do <laughs> I say quite easy <laughs> it's not really <laughs> anyway I'm gonna finish walking the dogs so I'm gonna take you home with me and we're gonna go and learn how to do that capture it doesn't have a name because I just made it up so the makey uppy thing so these are the lovely bad boys that you saw on my Facebook reel and wanted me to do a tutorial for so we're going to do that today you really need to be able to do this. This capture in a stone using HP 3-in-1. I had to think there for a minute. Um, and i got to thank John for showing me how to do this because I've been pulling my hair out and I've been messaging him constantly like, I can't do it. Anyway, I can do it now and I can show you how to do it, which is awesome. So first you need to be able to join HP 3-in-1 and then the rest of it is pretty simple. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. In advance, so you know, these are 14 uh, millimeter Rivoli's. The large ring around the outside there is a 24.25 millimeter 12 SWG ring from Tom's Ring Shop. The rings that go through that, so around that and capture the HP 3M1 are these ones. 19 SWG, 5.45 millimeters with an AR of 5.45 if you're working by AR. So that's those ones. The actual HP 3-in-1 that holds the stone, 4mm ID, 19 SWG. Basically, they're your 532s in Imperial. So, that's them. You need to know that information. But forget that for a minute. I'm actually going to show you how to close a piece of HP 3-in-1 with a larger strip of HP 3M1, which I'll make now off camera, because that's really rather small, and showing you how to close it is gonna be fiddly, and you're better off practicing on a larger one first. So let me just go and quickly whip up a piece of HP 3M1 in this size, and then I'll show you how to close it. Right, so with a bigger piece of HP 3M1, the uses also a thicker ring as well as bigger. The thicker means there'll be less movement in it, so I can show you what to do, and you can practice yourself what to do, and then you can move on to the smaller rings once you've got this in your head, because it is a little bit fiddly, I don't mind telling you. So, always holding in the way you've woven it. I'm going along that way, right? What's going to happen is we're going to fold it around like that. So you can see that you've got like that there. Oh, let me go over there. So straighten it back out again. So when you fold it like that, you'll see these two crosses. See the two crosses. What we're gonna do? Where's my pointy stick? Can't find my pointy stick again, guys. I need that stapled to me somewhere somehow right okay let's use a pen i'm gonna lift that one up and see him underneath there that's the one we're gonna open so even though right so this one is the one that crosses over the top ignore him this is the one we want to open here and then when he's open we're gonna capture that one there so again ignoring the one that's on top so that one's on top of that one that one's on top of that one. But we're going for the ones that are underneath. And it seems like I'm dragging this out, but I'm getting this into your head because this is what I had to do to learn it. So ignoring the top ones, we're going to take that one underneath there. We're going to open him up and we're going to join him onto that one. And then what's going to happen is this one that won't be attached because he'd be, we ignored him. We open him and then he goes round and goes through the other one we ignored there. Yeah, so looking at that, I need to grab hold of him, put my glasses on, that'd be helpful, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, so if you're looking for a speedy video, this one isn't going to be it because you, I need, really need to take my time to explain this so you actually get it. So I'm holding that like that. Look, there's the one we ignored. I'm going to open him up like that. Right? Take my snakey again. Make sure they're all lying right and fold him over. See now we've got those two crossing. Ignore. Ignore that one. And put him through the one underneath there. Right? And close it up. Now without twisting it, putting it down or anything, you've got to you can see. Let him go. And then the one that we ignored there, we need to open him. Right. And he, and you'll know straight away, because you can see there's the loose one. You just need to put him down through there. <laughs> and it seems so easy when I show you slow and steady like that. But it took me beep okay. ages to work that out. Right, I'm just going to show you that again, because on watching it back, I realised that I didn't actually capture it properly, right? And I can't be doing that. So, I'm going to show you again. Right? There's our piece, making sure that the one... It, We've, we're holding it the way we've weaved it, right? So we haven't moved it around to confuse matters. Fold him round. And you can see there that that's the one we want to open, right? Because he's the one that's underneath that one. Oh, I can't believe I blooped that then. I made it look too easy, that's the problem. Right, pick his tail up and fold him over. You've got that cross. Ignore the ring that's on the top. And put it through that one there. Like that. And close him up. Right, so the other one then, the one that we ignored, we want to open him up. Yeah. And we want to pair him up with the one that we ignored on the other side, which you can tell is that one because he's the one that's loose and not connected to anything. So turn him, put him in there. And this time when I tighten it up, I won't drop it. And hopefully I've made it look easy. Ta-da! All joined. How good is that? Thank you so much, John, because I tell you what, that done my head in for such a long time. So grab some rings, practice that. Press pause on this button for on this video first. Practice that. Then come back and we'll do the smaller version to capture the stone. Right, so once you've got that down pat, what I want you to do now is do your HP 3-in-1, only this time in the smaller size, the suitable for capturing this particular stone. Okay, this is a 14 millimeter Rivoli. Um, four millimeters, 19 SWG, your 532s if you're working in Imperial. Um, and what you wanna do is you wanna make your piece of HP 3-in-1 and you want to just keep going until it works out and it goes around your stone, right? I want to go around your stone and the rings pretty much touch so you know it's going to be about the right size. When we, when we join it together, we try to put the stone in, we can decide if we need to go white, bigger or smaller, right? But that's your benchmark. Start off so it goes round like that and then lie him down again, right? Then what we want to do is what I showed you before. So when we fold him over, there's those crosses, those two end crosses there, right? So on this side, ignoring the top one, we want to open this one and just move him around and find the Problem if you've got really good closures is finding them again, right? So you want to open that one. Run your fingers along here and pick this up. Ignoring the one that's on the top, put that one in there into the one that's underneath. That was a bit more fiddly when you're working with a smaller ring size. There you go. Try not to drop him now because then it all goes pear-shaped. Right, so he's in. And then we're grabbing the other one. That one now was the top one that we ignored. Open him up. And bring him round to go through the one that we ignored over there. 
fiddly now. Don't drop it. <laughs> she says, don't drop it. There he is in there. Put him down if you think you're going to drop it. Because once I drop it, I just can't work it out again. Da da da. All joined. There you go. Perfect. Right. Once he's joined, there is a bit of a twist. So it does feel like you've done it wrong, Luxie. But don't panic. Put it down. Just tap it gently and you'll see that it goes around. Pick it up and it'll feel really you stiff and twisted and you think, oh God, no. Just put it down. Let it find its own level and you'll find that it is joined fine. Okay. So now you want to take your stone. Put him in. I'll start to put him in. Right. So he's sitting in there now. We want to give a firm press so these rings will come up over and you'll click in like that, right? If you can't go in without seriously deforming these rings, then you need to add another two rings to your HP 3-in-1 to make it a little bit longer, right? Um, and then it'll click in fine. If, it's, if it clicks in too easy, then open it up and take two out and that'll tighten the whole thing up. And that's it. Lovely jubbly. Now, what we want to do is take our big ring. We're going to put that around there. And then we're going to use our 19 SWG 5.45s to join him to the frame. And that's it. It's fab in it. Looks really good though. If I do say so myself. So what we're going to do is grab that one under there. And also grab that one. See, so he's going through at that point, through there, he's capturing those two there. Yeah, once you're happy, you can try putting it in, and, and eventually you'll find the right way because it's the only way that this ring will sit flush. And then add him onto your big ring. And then do the same thing again. So find the next hole. Like that, look. Put him on. There you go. Find the next hole. Doesn't matter if you skip a hole because you're going to fill them all anyway. So just go back and fill in any ones that you've missed. Essentially, you just want to go around knitting this all together. Well, you've got to laugh. I just got up to make myself a cup of tea and I've put that pink one down somewhere now. <laughs> Thank God I got that far. Pretty much you knew what I was doing, okay? I, um, I was putting these ones in. Just keep putting them in until you've gone all the way around. At some point, I will discover the pink one in the fridge or something knowing me. So that's that. Um, what else can I tell you, really? If you're going around and you find these ones to start to get too tight, then put a larger size in. I found that happens, even though these are both the same. One of them, and I can't remember which now, I think has a slightly larger ring size on the outside. So if you're following my pattern, you're doing it, and you find this starts to get too tight, just go up one ring size on the joining ring. Just use your brain on that one, really. And that's it. Which I really want to stick these in my eyes now. <laughs> Look like shiny, shiny eyes. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed learning how to join HP 3 and one You've got something nice and shiny to work on. And yeah, enjoy, guys.